Today, let's talk about how we can concentrate on our learning or even our work better. Let's now look at how we normally, how we normally go about our learning or, or work. And typically the way it happens is we have, we have some vague determination, we have some intention that I need to read this book or learn this, do this online course, maybe like finish some work. But we don't have a very strong determination. So we sit down, okay, next couple of hours, let me see what I can do. And we, then we look at the book and then we maybe read for 15, 20 minutes or watch a video and then some other thought comes. We remember this email that I have not sent. I'll remember some other problem, this particular, some other uh, thought or distraction will come and then we'll leave what we're doing and check our email quickly, maybe check our WhatsApp, check, go to our phone. Then we get distracted and feel frustrated. We try one or two more times and then we give up. So this, so today, any kind of focused effort, whether it is for learning or work, it is, it is not really happening. The focus is not really, the concentration is not getting built up because we are messing it up. We are mixing everything. We are, we are switching our, our attention. We are going to some other task. We're taking up our phone. And as a result, this thing that can be done in one hour, it can take easily three to four hours. So today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process for building your concentration. You can use this technique for learning. You can use it for work. It works across the board. All right. So let's now understand what are the mistakes that we normally make and let's fix those mistakes one by one. And that will give us a step-by-step -step process. The first big mistake when we think about focusing or think about concentrating is that we don't have a specific well-defined period in mind. Now, as an example, I let, let's say I sit with a book and I tell myself, let me just read for a couple of hours. Now, when I'm reading it, typically after 25, 30 minutes, sometimes after 40 minutes, my mind is feeling saturated. Or the other possibility is that maybe I'm, I'm remembering, okay, what about that task I need to finish? Now, when there is no finite timeline, when there is no end point in sight, let's say if my intention is to keep reading this book nonstop for next four or five hours, then I'll think, no, that thing cannot wait. Let me just go and quickly do that and come back. So we find a ready-made excuse to switch. And another problem is that our mind can focus and absorb something only for so long. Studies have shown that typically for 25 to 30 minutes, if we are if we're trying to learn something, that's how much we can focus. For, let's say about 25, 30 minutes. So if I'm reading for reading a book for let's say for four hours. And if I was able to focus only for the first 30 minutes, how much time did I effectively, did I actually learn? Only half an hour, which means three and a half out of four hours, it just went completely waste. So if you think about the graph, the initially the learning is high and then after half an hour, it, it's, it dips very, very quickly. And then we are spending time, but we are not really learning. We're getting frustrated. And the next time we don't even feel like opening that book. All right. So this is the first mistake we make, which is that we don't have a well-defined time period. We just try to do a very long stretch of learning or work. Big mistake. So my first recommendation to you is pick a short time period. How much? I would say if you are doing some kind of one-way learning, you're reading a book or watching a video course or something like that, maybe half an hour, 25 to 30 minutes is good enough. If you're doing something which is a little more engaging, you are solving problems or you are, uh, maybe there's some kind of activity involved, you can stretch this period for up to 15 minutes, maybe an hour. But my recommendation is not more than one hour. So let us say minimum 25 minutes, maximum up to 15 minutes. In fact, these numbers are not just random. Uh, at Habit Strong, we run boot camps of focused learning and focused work. And there we use these time intervals. So in the focus learning, we do this for half, for 25 minutes and then give a five minute break. And focus work, we do 15 minutes and then give a 10 minute break, all right? So, so first thing is pick a, pick a small or well-defined time interval after which you are going to take a full and complete break. And one additional advantage of that is while you are focusing on your learning or your work, if some other thought comes in, you know that this is, this remaining focus is only for so much time. So you can go and attend to it later. So you don't have to switch right now. All right. So this is the starting point, a well-defined time interval or what I like to call a focus sprint, a well-defined focus sprint. All right. Good. 
Step number two is have a clear intentionality. In your mind, there should be a clear determination that for next 25 minutes or 40 minutes or whatever time you've picked up, your priority is reading this book or doing this activity. So it's task A and this task only, nothing else. That clarity has to be there because if we do not have that clarity, when we start working, working on A, our mind will come up with some other task number B. And then we will leave A and switch to B. When we start doing B, our mind will think of some task C. So we'll keep going round and round. So that is why sometimes between work, we check our email. Between the email, we go and check WhatsApp. Terrible idea. All right. So start with a clear determination for next, say, 25 minutes. I'm going to learn, read from this book. Nothing else in the world is going to come in my way. With that firm determina determination on your side, next step. Sometimes what happens is, in life, maybe there is some problem you are facing or something is going on because of which your mind is totally caught up in something. So let's say as an example, you had maybe unfortunately, you had a quarrel with somebody, maybe some kind of fight or argument, and you are really angry, you are seething at that person. So now when you try to do some focus work again, again and again, those thoughts will keep coming in your mind, some kind of rumination. So you're caught in a, in a, in a thinking loop. Right? So if, if this kind of rumination is preventing you from focusing, then one solution I want to offer is take a diary and write down your thoughts. Dump whatever thoughts, whatever worries, whatever emotions you have, put them down on a piece of paper. Think of it like a conversation you're having with yourself. So you are doing a journal. And at the end of it, you can do this for 15, 20 minutes so, or, or as long as you think it requires. And at the end of it, try to bring it to some conclusion. So as an example, you might come to the conclusion that, okay, tomorrow when, that meet, when I meet that person, let me try to say X, Y, Z and resolve it. Or you might come to a conclusion that, look, there is nothing I can do. It's not a great situation, but there's nothing I can do. So just accept it and move on. All right. So journaling to let go of anything which is, uh, which is bogging you down, which is causing a lot of rumination will help you let go and move on. And then you can start doing the focus work that I'm talking about. All right. Next, start with a clear goal. Okay. So let's say I have 25 minutes of focus and let's and, uh, assume that you want to do two such sessions. So you have 25 to 50 minutes. Have clear, a clear idea in your mind. What exactly am I going to accomplish? So you might say, okay, so in 50 minutes, I'm go going to finish, let us say, 40 pages of this book. That's clear cut, all right? So try to quantify it, identify it, and one more thing you can do, it'll help a lot is, share this goal with somebody else, somebody outside if possible. Now, one great way to make this kind of focus learning happen is to do it as part of, maybe with a study partner. Now, that is why we run boot camps where we do it with a small group, with a facilitator, but even on your own, if you have a study partner, a couple of people together, you're doing it, everybody can share their goals, all right? So you share what your goal is. So I want to finish 40 pages of this particular book, all right? So now when, once you've given that target, now you know that, okay, you know, when the session is done, I have to share this and therefore let me try to hit the target. So if your mind is tempted to go in some other direction, you'll remember, no, 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 no. There is a goal here and I'm accountable for it. So that accountability makes a huge difference, all right? Next. Before you get started, remember I gave you an example earlier, when you start doing task A, your mind thinks of task B. When you think of, when you start doing B, you'll think of C. So at any point of time, there are possibly a lot of thoughts in our mind. We're thinking about many things in the background. We don't want that. We want to just, uh, we want our mind to just have one objective, the task at hand, and let go of everything else for that finite time interval. So if you're doing 25 minutes into two, 50 minutes, let's say with a five minute break. So for next hour or so, you want your mind to let go of everything else. So here is what you can do. Take a piece of paper and right now, whatever you're thinking of, this task, that email, this is pending, whatever it is, write those things down, one, two, three, four, five bullet point wise, okay? And then tell yourself all these things are for later, not right now. This is something that I like to call brain dump. And in fact, on our on Habit Strong on this channel, you will find a video on brain dump. If you, want, if you wish, you can go and watch that video. All right, next. Now that you have put away, written down all your thoughts, you have told yourself, okay, let me, let me now just let go of those things. 
I can do them later. Now you're ready to focus, but one last thing. Before you get started, it's important to calm your mind down, especially on days on which your mind is agitated, you're getting all kinds of thoughts, your mind is, is sort of in a caught up in a loop. So you can do a couple of things. One is you can do meditation for about five minutes, or you can just take a few slow, long, deep breaths. As you take those deep breaths, your mind will calm down. There will be a rare day when maybe you're already calm, but you're feeling a little bit lethargic. If that happens, one thing which could work is take a few quick deep breaths. So when you take quick deep breaths fast, you deep breath in very quickly and breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. If you do that quickly, it, it makes you more alert. Okay. So that is something you can use on days on which you're focused, but you're feeling a bit lethargic. After that, the last step is start a timer. I prefer to use a Chrome extension on my laptop where the timer is ticking. Sometimes I keep the ticking sound on, sometimes I will mute it. It's up to you, all right? And then while the timer is running, stay on that task, don't switch to anything else. Now there are two scenarios in which your mind may come up with different things. So as an example, while you're working or doing some focused learning, you think of some, some other task. Oh, what about this, this particular email? If that happens, if you have not written it down earlier in the brain dump, just add it to that list, okay? So don't switch and do some other task, even for, even for 30 seconds, just add it to that list and come back to, your, come back to your task. One other thing that could happen is sometimes our mind can drift away unknowingly. It may just get caught up in some daydream and we, may, we might realize it only two minutes later or three minutes later. So whenever you realize that, okay, I have drifted, don't beat yourself up, don't, don't, don't feel bad about it. Just let go of the distraction and come back and resume as if nothing had happened. And do this as many times as it takes. And when the timer goes off, stop and take a full and complete break. And then if you wish, after, after a break, when you have recovered, you can start again. So this is how you can do focused work. This is not theory. This is something that we have experimented with, with sufficiently. We know that this works. And I'm very confident if you try this, it can work for you as well. All right. So hope you found it useful. Thank you for listening and take care. Bye-bye.